Hey guys, it's Cody Warner at the Idaho Medical Academy. Today we're going to be going over your patient assessment trauma skill sheet. We're going to go over it step by step, explain everything so that you can apply it to future trauma scenarios in class. Okay, let's go over that trauma patient assessment sheet. Unlike the other skill sheets you've done so far, your cardiac arrest, your O2 and airway, and your joint and long bone, those are just skills that you can now apply to this skill sheet. So this is, you're going to be dispatched to a call, and you're going to show up, patient care, transport, all the way till you get to the hospital. Okay. So as you notice, the sheet is broken into multiple boxes. Our first box is scene size of. This is you being dispatched. We get this information on our MDT or tablet from dispatch to our actual rig. So the first things first, BSI, making sure that our scene is safe. Then we need to determine if it's a mechanism of injury or nature of illness. For trauma, it's gonna be a mechanism. Car crash, motorcycle accident, fall patient, so on and so forth. Then we wanna know how many patients we have. Do I need to get multiple ambulances come in or do we just have our one, one patient? Uh, then we will go ahead and request additional EMS. I suggest doing it for all call types. You can always cancel them when you get there. Uh, and then you will be considering C-spine. For a mechanism of injury, we're always going to consider it uh, until we get to scene and we can actually clear C-spine. But for now, we're going to assume that this patient, uh, we need to take C-spine precautions. Once you get on scene, you're going to start your primary assessment. It's that second box. First thing we do is take a general impression. Uh, your proctor should give you something generic about what's on scene, but you can go ahead and ask any questions you want. If it's a fall patient, I would want to know how, how far did the patient fall? Was it on the third story building on a construction site or was it at an assisted living facility? If it's a car accident, how fast were the cars going? How many cars? Were seat belts worn? Uh, did, did, can I see airbags that went off? Any question you want. Okay? Now you're going to actually start patient care and we're going to get our patient's level of responsiveness using our AVPU scale. Hey sir, can you hear me? Not move on. Verbal stimuli, painful stimuli, unconscious. Try to get a chief complaint if you can. If your patient's unconscious, you won't be able to get a chief complaint. The only thing you can look for are major life threats, such as like major bleeding. Okay. If you can't get a chief complaint, get that from your patient. Then move on to your ABCs. Ass uh, assess the airway. If they're unconscious, you're going to have to open it. Use a jaw thrust. Verbalize if you'd have to suction or not. And then place an adjunct if you need to or not. Uh, if they're talking to you and they're conscious, you know the airway is clear and patent. Then move on to breathing. We want rate, rhythm, and quality. And we want to make sure they're breathing at an adequate rate. Do I need to begin ventilations or do I not? Um, also here you can start oxygen administration. Whether a cannula, a non-rebreather, you can always add or take off. Then you're going to move to C for circulation. Check for a pulse, rate, rhythm, and quality. We'll assess their skin. We want pink, warm, and dry. Sometimes patients who are in a significant trauma might be pale, cool, and clammy, showing signs of shock. You're going to treat for shock, put oxygen on, put a blanket over them, and keep them supine. Then you move on to disability. This is when we're going to get a GCS and we're going to assess their mental status using the Glasgow Coma Scale. Say you do get a low GCS, is that disability due to an injury, right? If they're normally at a 15, but after they got in this car wreck, now they're sitting at 10 or 11, that'd be due to injury. But if they're your old dementia patient who normally can't answer your questions, and they're always at a GCS of 12. This new GCS is not a disability due to injury. Uh, then we're gonna move on to expose. If our patient's unconscious, we are going to be trauma naked. We're taking off all the clothes because we wanna find all the injuries. If not, you only need to expose what's necessary. If my patient's conscious and says, I broke my collarbone, I'm gonna cut off the shirt to assist the collarbone. I don't need to take their pants off. Then we're gonna get to the back of the ambulance, however you move them, uh, however you move them if you wanna use uh, the backboard, scoop stretcher, or if they're able to walk. Once you're in the back of the ambulance, you're going to try to obtain a sample history. You want to know about their medical history. If they're unconscious, you can't get it, but you still need to verbalize, you would try to obtain it. Then you're going to get the rest of your vitals. So you're going to get your blood pressure, you've already got your breathing rate, you've already got your pulse, but now you can get an SpO2, you can get a blood glucose, you can get temperature, whatever vital signs you want, but bare minimum you have to get baseline. Once you're done with that history taking box, you're going to move on to your secondary. For trauma, it's just going to be a full head to toe assessment. You're going to get hands on, especially if they're unconscious. If they're unconscious, I need to find all the injuries. So I'm going to start at their head 
and I'm verbalizing to my proctor everything I'm looking for. I'm looking for depression, I'm looking for decap BTLS, hematomas, I'm checking pupils for pearl, I'm looking at the nose and the ears for any blood or CSF in the ears, um, making sure my jaw and mandible are intact. Then I'm going to move on to the neck. I'm going to feel the back of the spine, feel for any step-offs or crepitus, check my trachea and make sure it's midline, I'm going to see if I have JBD. If I do have positive findings for um, a deviated trachea, nothing I can do about that, but I am going to note it for the doctors, okay? Then we're going to move on to the chest. I'm going to palpate, feel the chest, feel for any crepitus, right? This is a cage. I want to make sure that's nice and sturdy. I'm going to look for any bruising or other injuries, and then I'm going to auscultate for lung sounds. Then we're going to move on down to the abdomen. Abdomen has four quadrants. We're going to use both hands. We're going to do this rolling motion with each quadrant. I'm going to push in, make sure it's soft, non-tender, and I want to make sure it also rebounds. We're going to do that for each quadrant. Say it is very rigid or distended or very hot to the touch. It could be a sign of internal bleeding. Again, nothing we're going to do for it, but we do have to note it. Move down to my pelvis. I'm going to push in. I'm going to push out, feeling for stability. If it is unstable, that's a life threat due to all the vasculature that runs through here. I want to get a pelvic binder on there to stop any possible internal bleeding. Cess and genitalia if necessary. If not, I'm going to just verbalize I don't find it necessary. Move on down to my lower extremities. Fill in the femur. I like to push in opposite directions to feel the stability. Make sure my kneecap is intact. Assess in the lower leg for any deformities. Make sure my ankle is intact. And check in a pulse. If my patient's conscious, then I'm going to do full CMS. Pulse, can you wiggle your toes? Can you feel me touching? I'm going to do the same thing on the other leg. If I find any injuries, if they're not life threatening, I'm going to wait till the end because I want to find all my life threats. If it is something life threatening, I'm going to fix it immediately. Once I'm done with my lower extremities, I'm going to move up to the upper extremities. I'm going to fill my shoulder, make sure it's intact. Assess the humerus for any uh, deformities or instability. Make sure my elbow's intact, my lower arm, my wrist, and then we're going to check for a pulse or CMS if they're conscious. And then I'm going to assess the other arm as well. Once I got that done, I do want to assess the back, see if there's any bruising, any crepitus, any step-offs in the spine. I typically do this when moving the patient from the scene to the gurney, uh, but if not, it's appropriate to do a log roll and assess for any additional injuries. Once we're done with that, now we can manage our secondary injuries. So that would be like our ankle fracture or a dislocated wrist. Now that all the life threats have been taken care of or we don't have any life threats, I'm going to go back to those secondary injuries. Then we're going to reassess. Critical patients every five minutes, non-critical every 15. And for this one, we do not have to give a radio report, only in your medical assessment. Okay, you guys, that was your trauma assessment sheet. If you have any other questions, please feel free to email or talk to your instructor about it in class. Thanks for watching.